Suresh Joshi also joins us on the show. Suresh, hi, good to be speaking with you. Let's start with pharma itself because a lot of stars there today, whether it's an Entero, whether it's a Concord Biotech, New Labs, uh, quite a few names are actually holding up in the green. Uh, what's your top bet within pharma? Uh, maybe mid cap, small cap? No, two aspects. One, I think within the large and mid cap pharma names, we continue holding Sun and Dr. Reddy's in our portfolio. Obviously, the rationale behind it uh, remains the same. Uh, they've got a very good specialty portfolio. And the expectations in terms of more specialty launch uh, with the kind of uh, trials that they're probably going to do, specifically, I think, the stage three trials uh, and expectations of uh, launches in the next few quarters, I think that will augur well in terms of both the portfolio mix as well as the margins related to these launches as well as revenue exclusivity. So I think Sun and Dr. Reddy's is something that uh, we we continue to hold in our global portfolios. Uh, uh, within the mid-cap name, uh, Natco Pharma on declines is something that we will be keeping on our watch list. Again, I think the branded generic space where Natco is largely present uh, seems to be unperturbed uh, in terms of any kind of price action or erosion itself. The second element also is the kind of margins that they probably make because of the branded generic business. Uh, expectations of few key launches, few key FTFs in the next uh, few quarters that will certainly augur well in terms of their uh, product mix and portfolio mix as well. The geographical mix holds up uh, wonderfully well from that co pharma as well. And therefore, I think the maintenance of beta margins at these elevated levels uh, uh, can be understood to be a basic scenario for the for, for the company as a whole. And expecting a stable and solid earnings growth to continue as new launches take place in the next few quarters. Uh, so I think Sun, Dr. Reddy's as a whole, we to hold that in our portfolios, something like an ad con decline is something that we want. Right. Okay. That's the take on pharma. In fact, Sinjin is the one today which is scaling up nicely. And of course, names like uh, Metropolis as well from the healthcare universe, three and a half percent higher for this particular stock as we speak right now. IRCTC, Exide, Hindustan Copper, these are some of the buzzers from within the broader end of the market. And uh, Kunal, you've been mapping the charts of Hindustan Copper, right? Another Almost a 3% dash coming in today too. Yeah, still it's attra attractive. And I think, uh, you know, that uh, the last week, uh, you know, one of days of consolidation, few of days of consolidation, I think it actually been, uh, you know, a positive sign for stock price because, you know, the indicators were getting into the right overbought territory. Those few days of consolidation, mild correction, I think just about uh, less than a few percentage points for the stock, I think has probably brought the indicators back into a neutral territory. So, you know, these are the kind of moves which indicate, uh, you know, that the stock, uh, the for the stock is still intact and the stock should see uh, you know more upside over the medium to medium term now we should be looking at a psychological break of that uh, you know 400 as the next bigger target for hindustan copper looking at the way many of the commodity stocks are moving up high hindustan zinc uh, you know metal stocks like vedanta sale etc i would probably believe that there should be more legs on the upside for hindustan copper okay so that's a take coming in on vedanta hindustan copper and a couple of these metal names that continue to gain ground mayuresh i'm wondering whether you have a view on Bharti Hexacom. What a listing it's been. Oh, fabulous one, Anisha. And uh, again, I think the circles that they operate out of, uh, I think they're fast growing circles uh, in, in the context of the telecom industry as a whole. ARPUs have held up pretty well for them, expectations of them across the 200 rupee ARPU mark as well. Margins have been relatively stable, have been relatively strong and stable as well. And then putting all these characteristics put together, uh, probably ensure that the kind of earnings growth momentum that this stock can probably exhibit uh, can be pretty solid as well. Uh, so to that extent, yes, I think it's a solid thing. Uh, I think if investors are probably looking at something in this space, uh, my own sense is that uh, all telecom players, including Bharti Airtel, uh, has, have done phenomenally well. Geo through Reliance has done phenomenally well as well. The trigger for these stocks is going to be ARPU increases in each and my own sense is that over the next few months, uh, you will see some element of Increase come through. A lot of the capex, as an example for Bharati Airtel, has been front loaded in terms of the 5G infrastructure spend. And therefore, I think if you look at the big picture argument for Airtel, Hexacom, or Geo in general, ARPU increases will probably mean that cash flows improve. Because of cash flow improvement and because capex has got front loaded, there will be significant amount of deleveraging that can happen in the balance sheet in the next few quarters. And incrementally, I think that leads to better return ratios as well. So yeah, I think the space looks very, very interesting. As I said, my own space and my own take is uh, ARPU increases over the next few quarters. 
Apu increases is what Mayuresh is betting on. In fact, Bharti has uh, had a good pop on uh, its listing itself, 33% uh, premium to its issue price. And Vodafone idea, on the other hand, is down about almost 5%. Remember, the board uh, approved uh, the FPO of uh, almost 18,000 crore rupees worth of equity shares, the opening date for which is the 18th of April. Vodafone idea currently lower by about 4% as we speak right now. Mayuresh, what do you think of this sizable FPO by uh, Vodafone and would it really respect all the problems that it's had in the past? Uh, so, after the Nayesha, I think it's 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 a very uh, complex uh, scenario for Vodafone idea. I think they need this capital not for growth, for ensuring that the stability in terms of their existing business operations is properly maintained. Uh, they've obviously been losing subscribers in their circles just by the sheer uh, inability to probably have funds in place and having these customers transition from either 2G or 3G to the 4G or 5G platform itself. Uh, there will be accelerated investments that will be required for this entire transition to happen. And debt at these levels is extremely elevated, more than a lakh and 50,000 odd crores. Uh, so I think it's more stability capital that you're probably looking at this juncture to probably ensure that the operation just carry on in the normal course of uh, events that probably take place. Uh, so I think within the space, uh, barring out of one idea, it might still be an underperformer. I think all these other three players, uh, I mean, Bharti is a part of Airtel, but I think Airtel Geo should continue doing well. Uh, Instar, Aisha, is something that will have a rub-off effect, uh, and it already has, because that provides stability in terms of the tenancy ratio that Vodafone ID can give, uh, give, give to them. Also, I think the need for incremental towers expected to come through as the 5G ecosystem starts building across the length and breadth of the country will also probably keep this stock focus uh, relatively stable balance sheet uh, and therefore i think tenancy issues being stable and improving thereof can be a trigger for the stock from the current levels uh, not suggesting go out there and buy in the stars but i think the momentum in the stars can be very good okay the momentum on indus towers is here to stay and betting on a telecom up or uh, rather tariff uptick in telecom prices we'll take a very quick break but we'll continue tracking what on the other side as well. But shifting focus to TCS because that's what we expect to deliver a decent set of numbers in the course of next 30 minutes to one hour. But Mayuresh, what cues are you watching out for come TCS's numbers? So clearly, Anisha, I think the expectation that the state has is 1% uh, uh, growth, 1.2% growth in terms of constant currency, around 1.4, 1.5% growth in of dollar dollar revenues sequentially for TCS. Uh, obviously, the order wins from B BSNL is going to be a significant one. And therefore, I think the revenue contribution from this one over the next few quarters might be significantly uh, contributing to the overall revenue pie. Generally, I think uh, the growth prospects uh, should be reasonably placed. And therefore, I think the EBIT margin should hold up about that 25% mark, which the street probably believes in. Now, coming to the commentary, I think the commentary will be uh, looking forward to in terms of uh, more avenues in terms of uh, cloud, in terms of AI. And therefore, I think the expectations in terms of TCVs holding up over the next few quarters, albeit I think if you leave aside a quarter or two, where I think still decision making is getting deferred uh, by, by a couple of quarters, I think the second half should show significant amount of recovery. And therefore, I think uh, all these elements put together would probably mean that if commentary stays very, very positive. Uh, and as our take is that management commentary should remain positive for TCS as well. Second half can be excellent for TCS as well. Uh, so I think generally, I think how they're looking at revenue trends, what is the deal pipeline, utilization levels, attrition, all those aspects will be taken into fold. It might be a little bit sticky this quarter and the next, uh, but my take is that the second uh, half recovery can be a good one for TCS. Uh, so let's wait for numbers, but anybody holding on to the talk should work. Okay, that's the take coming in on TCS. But Ani, you tell us, what's your poll penciling in for uh, TCS today? Well, the expectation from the overall sector is weak, so not much. But yes, amongst the peers, this might just stand out as a better earning because we're expecting growth to be 1.5% to 2%. That's because the BSNL deal will kick in. The furloughs which are impacting the uh, performance in Q3, Q, uh, you know, Q3 won't be here this time around. So we're expecting a better number. Margin is pretty much stable around the 25 25.2% mark. And the profitability will be higher, especially because of, of course, the revenue growth, the operating leverage kicking in. But also last quarter, there was a one-time provision, which 
will not be there. Dividend momentum is also expected to be quite strong. Same set. $9 billion range because remember there was that $2.5 billion Viva deal that had happened so that will support the sentiment but again the important thing to watch out is the management commentary about FI25 will it be high single digit growth or uh, you know mid single digit growth that's important to know because double digit everybody is penciling in right now and the hiring outlook demand outlook those are the big things to watch out for valuation wise the stock is not cheap by any metric it's sitting at what 28 times forward earnings so it's not really cheap um, but I think um, Let's see what the company delivers because that will set the tone for the rest of the IP pack as well. That's about TCS but in the meantime take a look at Excite. That stock just is uh, firing away in the trading session and so is Amara Raja battery. Um, Mayuresh, one would wonder after the kind of up move that we have seen on Excite, should anyone try and fathom buy a fresh on both of the counters? I mean declines would be a better strategy mm -hmm. and a clear disclaimer, I am a little biased because uh, we do hold these stocks in our portfolios. Uh, again, I think the entire premise in terms of global majors probably looking at uh, Exide as uh, their, their supplier for uh, lead batteries. Uh, even Amara Raja is developing those technologies as well. So I, as these capacities start coming through in the next few quarters, uh, and because I think we've got a very niche advantage in terms of manufacturing these uh, batteries uh, out of the capacities in India as well, uh, and barriers are relatively higher because I think new players will take more time significant amount of capex and a distribution network as well to probably ensure that they probably even get near what Amara and Excite are probably doing will mean that their probably dominance in terms of the battery market probably continues. The second element in terms of what Excite probably has, uh, the HDFC library, just in case they want to carry on the capex which is almost 500-600 crore in terms of creating that 6 gigawatt hours in terms of battery capacities, the technological uh, uh, help that they are probably getting from their Swiss partner as well. I think all these steps will probably mean that leverage does not increase onto the balance sheet. And they've got a hedge uh, outside autos as well. Industrials are still expected to do very, very well as CAPEX, both government and private kick in, and specifically private CAPEX over the next few quarters. And the replacement market as well, where pricing probably remains in favor of these battery makers as well. There's also a small auxiliary battery that is probably required for EV, battery, EV players, uh, whether it's two-wheelers or four-wheelers, which will also aid volume growth going forward. So a lot of triggers and tailwinds uh, for these battery makers in the auto angst space. Uh, so anybody holding on can definitely hold on. Fresh investors need to probably take uh, declines as their buying opportunity. Okay, that's the take coming in on why Exide could be the buzz of the day. But Mayuresh, good to have you on the show. We let you go on that note. Let's do some closing trades as well as we step into the last lap of today's trading session. Uh, Kunal, what's in your list? So, LNT France is something looks attractive. The stock is coming back towards a breakout around the 170 mark. So potential breakout above 170 levels for NT Finance is something which I'd watch out for in terms of Right. Naresh, what about your closing trades? So that is buy on IRCTC. Uh, the stock continues to look interesting. Uh, it had topped out around this 1050 mark almost closer to it in 2021. A recent top back in January, February was around that level. Today we are all those uh, prices. So a good breakout uh, trade here could go towards 50 to 12 in the short term. Take a very quick break on that note. Still haven't resurrected from the lows of the day. Uh, we're down a good 200 points on the index right now. Uh, Sun Pharma, LNT, Maruti, ONGC, ITC, all under pressure as we speak. Let's see what the last half an hour has in store for us after this very quick break. If you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe to ET Now.